Hi everybody, Grandad here again. What am I up to today? Well today I'm going to show you three of my little engines. And uh, as you know I like model making and uh, I like steam engines. So today I thought I'd uh, show you three of my little engines and each one is associated loosely or more exactly with, uh, with fire. Now the first one is a little model I've made and uh, this one is a mechanical uh, engine and if I bring it in move the camera a little bit and bring it over it's not showing it terribly well that's a little bit better it's a little uh, wooden engine and it's uh, it would when it was working if it was a metal engine it would be uh, a steam engine and it's called a beam engine. Now this uh, is all made of wood and it comes in a kit form and you wind it with this little handle here and it uh, revolves round and all the various parts of this beam engine work. Now it's, uh, it was made from a kit and uh, it's actually it's very well made really for for a, for a, what, what could be a toy I suppose there's one or two things that I would do to it to improve it so that it works a bit better I would uh, increase the the movement of this uh, bearing here so that it moved this arm a little bit more and therefore this uh, front part which has got the valve on it would move a little bit more pronounced and make it move a little bit further and make it better. The other thing I would do to improve it is to put it on a slightly bigger base because it, it, you have to hold it down uh, while you turn it because it's, it's very wobbly. So if I'd have been redesigning this uh, engine uh, to make it a little bit better I would uh, make a bigger base for it so that it held down better and uh, I would improve the movement of this piston, piston rod. But all in all I'm quite pleased with it now the whole thing is made from a kit which you can buy and it came in this box I'll just move the engine over there for a moment while I show you this box now it came in this box I've altered the box a bit but uh, it came in this box and uh, it's made by a firm called uh, Timber Kits uh, Timber Kits Limited and it's uh, a local firm it's in England here uh, it's uh, it's in Lambermour, which is a Welsh. I'm just on the border of Wales, so this within 30 miles of where I live, this this little kit was made uh, at a place called Lambermour, and it's the old vicarage hall at Lambermour, and the the firm is uh, Timber Kits Limited. Now they're on the internet, so uh, in Powys there. So uh, it's quite easy for you to, uh, if you're interested in these sort of models, and they do a whole range of models. I've got some pictures here, which is why I wanted to bring the box up. They've got a whole range of uh, different mechanical models that they make at this firm, and it all comes ready, ready cut out. You don't have to do anything to it, uh, uh, any machining to it at all. It's all the pieces are made separately and marked, and it's a very good uh, description on how to put it together and they even supply the glue and the wax to make the wheels turn a little bit easier and they do lots of different models now the one I've got is on here which is the uh, uh, is it on here yes it is it's in green at this bottom I mean you can paint them if you want make them look a little bit more interesting but as you know I don't paint things very good so I haven't painted it but you can paint the, the, the wood and make it look uh, even, even more attractive maybe and you can also buy uh, little motors that you can uh, alter this uh, engine so that it fits onto a, a base where there's electric motor and you can get uh, get the engine instead of turning it by hand as I am you can have a little electric motor that turns it so that you can look at it like that now the other one on there which I'm thinking of buying because I'm quite pleased with this uh, kit so I may get another one is the uh, the rocket the uh, engine the rocket so uh, at some time I may buy this other model which is the rocket and try and make that and if I do I'll show it on camera of course um, but uh, 
this particular model I got from a charity shop. It was uh, on sale in a charity shop at a local charity and I only paid £5 for it which is very cheap because when I looked on the internet to see how much they are this little model engine which I've got here um, of the beam engine they're actually £35 to buy so they're not cheap but they are very interesting and they're very well made I'm, I'm quite pleased with it and I'm hoping to uh, improve it a little bit I've got a board here which is uh, it's only a cheese board and what I'm thinking of doing is uh, mounting it on this cheese board and uh, see if I can find a way by this uh, elastic band I've got here and put a little motor. I've got a motor that I've uh, made up and I'm hoping to get a little motor and somehow drive this little mo engine along. And if I do that, I may include it uh, on one of my other videos when I get it so that you don't have to wind this handle here you can actually drive it uh, by a little electric motor and mount it on a slightly bigger board to make it a little bit more interesting but uh, that's a wonderful little engine and I'm very pleased with it and uh, although I didn't use the wax it still runs pretty good all the working parts you have to look at it quite carefully I mean I think it's meant for children to be honest but I don't think a child uh, you know, certainly you'd have to be a pretty uh, clever child to actually for a child to make this. But there's certainly I found it great enjoyment in uh, creating this beam engine, and the fact that it's all made of wood. There's no metal parts at all in it, and it all comes ready to put together. That's very interesting. Now, if I put that one away and clear the deck, so to speak, I'll show you my other engine. Now you may remember if you've been watching any of my videos that uh, I had a little engine for my birthday and this is it. Now again I'm hoping to mount this engine on a wooden board because uh, when it's actually running it, it vibrates quite a lot and uh, I'll get it running in a little minute but because it's quite noisy I thought I'd explain all about the engine before I actually Give it a give it a turn, give it a run, and show you how it works. Now this, I, I believe it's a, a Stirling engine. I'm not sure whether it's a Stirling engine or whether it's termed as a Stirling engine, but it's certainly known as a hot air engine. Now this was uh, quite intriguing to me how how this uh, little engine works, and I don't know whether the camera's in quite the right position, showing a good picture of me, but I don't know whether it's showing the engine very well, which is more important than I am. Um, but this little engine. Tip it down a little bit more and bring it in a little bit closer maybe. I'd like to get it to fully in camera. But this little engine has got uh, a flywheel and there's even a little spindle there so and I was quite surprised it's powerful enough to to drive something so I may get something and try and drive off this spindle here a little pulley and uh, get it to drive something. Now the interesting part about this engine is it only consists of a cylinder which has got these ribs on it which I think are for cooling but there's no uh, exhaust valves and there's only one cylinder now the way it operates you've got a piston here that goes in and out and uh, I've had, the, had this apart so I know there's nothing uh, inside there other than this piston going in and out of the cylinder and uh, what happens as you go around there's a little cam here and as the wheel runs around the cam it opens this little door on the side of the cylinder. I don't know whether you've noticed that but there's a little door here on the side of the cylinder and uh, as you go along and ro rotate the wheel the door opens and closes. Now the other part of this engine is this little burner and this is where the fire comes in that I was telling you about. Uh, you uh, light this little uh, burner which I'm going to fill up and light for you in a minute and uh, I put methylated spirits in it and you light the little burner and what happens is when you uh, open the when the door opens as the piston goes round the flame from this little flame here this little wick will be sucked inside the cylinder now that obviously creates heat and it makes and it expands inside that cylinder now when you move the wheel a bit further round the door closes sealing the uh, the chamber and presumably the cooling fans here the cooling ribs cool that air down sufficient that it will suck the piston back in as it contracts as the air the hot air contracts cools down and contracts it will cause a vacuum and suck the piston back down as it does so it reopens the door 
and sucks another bit of flame into the compa uh, the piston, into the uh, cylinder, and the whole process is then repeated over and over and over. Now, they call these little engines flame lickers, and I was intrigued to see how they work because I couldn't believe that, you know, you, you I know about engines and you have uh, exhaust gases and different cylinders and all sorts of things and the way pistons work in, in uh, steam engines. But I, I was quite intrigued by the way that this particular engine worked. But I'm very impressed with it. I have had it running, so I know what it's like. And what I'll do now, I've got some methylated spirits here, and I'll uh, put some in the burner. Now I've got to be a bit careful, because I don't want to be too messy, because normally I would use these, uh, these engines outside, but because it's still very cold, I'm not working outside at the moment, but I don't want to get too much uh, of this oil or anything on my desk as I'm working inside. So I've got a tissue here in case I spill any, but I'm not going to fill it too full. I'm only going to put a little bit in. Oh, that's a bit more than I wanted. That was out of afraid of, that I would put too much in it. And of course I've done so. Or a little bit back. There we go. Fortunately this... Uh, this mess evaporates quite quickly, so it shouldn't cause any problems. And I put the little door, the little uh, screw, back on. There we are. Now then, mop up any uh, of the methylated spirits that's just spilt. And I'll just leave it on there for a second for the, uh, the meths to burn away. Now, again, I'm going to mount this engine onto a piece of wood and, and hope that uh, it'll uh, drive some sort of other piece of machinery eventually but I really couldn't wait to show it to everybody and to get it going so I thought I'd just do this now I've got a match here and uh, I'll just light it up there we go now it's quite a quite a big flame there it's a little bit bigger than I wanted really now move it across. Now unfortunately, it I wanted to use it that way, but it doesn't work that way. I have to turn it sideways, which I didn't really like, but I'm going to alter the design a little bit and bring it over in front of the doorway. And uh, I'm then going to just uh, turn the engine over. And there it goes. Now as I said, it's a bit noisy. I didn't uh, say go in before. The flame has to be really close for it to work. Got a lively little engine. Quite a lot of power. Here you move the flame to the hole. You saw that stopped because the flame went out. In fact, the flame's a little bit high on this wick. Now, I'll just try and put a little bit of padding underneath this. I've got some tissues here because it is very noisy. I'll put that under it just to hope that it quietens it down a little bit. And we'll just get it running once more. But it's very clever how it works. I mean, I'm quite intrigued as to how this engine actually functions and uh, it runs really well you just get the flame in the right position and away she goes now let's quiet it down a little bit so the little door opens and closes and sucks the air in air from the flame goes inside and keeps the engine running. Oh, it's gone out again. <laughs> They're quite tricky. Now I'm not quite sure whether it is called a Stirling engine. It might be. There we go. Oh, I've blown 
Oh dear. I'm not having much luck with this uh, this little engine. I keep blowing the flame out. As I say, the, the vibration is such that uh, it moves the little burner over and when the burner moves away from the door it, it, it shuts it off and the flame doesn't work. Now, it's a little bit on the stiff side, I don't know why that should be, but uh, they did give me some, I've got some graphite grease which you have to use on this little engine, you can't put oil on it, only on the, uh, the other working parts. There we go. Running quite nicely now. Never mind, it gives you a good idea of how that little engine works. Now, I was quite intrigued with that. Now, I said I'd got three engines, that's two engines, and the other little engine I've got is this one. Now, this is a very crude little engine, and I actually made this one, which is probably why it's so crude. Uh, I uh, got the design from uh, another uh, YouTube uh, person. Um, and by the name of M M My Foot Boy. Now, My Foot Boy is a very good engineer, and if I uh, you look on his uh, on his YouTube channel, you'll see that he does a lot of engineering works and uh, lots of different uh, engines that he makes in the model line. But he he made some engines which are which are these are Sterling engines, and he made them out of sort of household materials because oh, excuse me because. Uh, he wanted to make it easy for people to actually make these little engines themselves. Now, he's a very good man because uh, he sent me, or if you ask him, or if you look on his website, on uh, My Ford Boy, it's called, and uh, if you look on his website, you can see uh, all about how to make this engine, and uh, also uh, he'll send you plans so that you don't have to, uh, you know, make your own plans up or get your measurements. Uh, from the video, you can watch the video to see how he puts it all together, um, and you you have the plans that he'll send you uh, of uh, of how to make the engine. And it doesn't exactly tell you how to put it together, but it shows you all the parts, how to make the sizes, the measurements, and all this is made out of. Surprisingly enough, is lollipop sticks. These little legs are made of lollipop sticks, and the gantry, and the actual uh, wheels and bits and pieces. The flywheel here is actually made from Pringle cans. So you've got three Pringle cans, you've got the metal parts of the Pringle cans cut cut up, and you've got a little balloon there on a little uh, piston, and you've got a couple of cranks, and on this side, if I turn it round, there's a needle, and it's just on a bit of cotton. Now, I uh, this is my second attempt at making this engine, and uh, the first time I didn't get quite uh, the gist of how it worked, because it's quite tricky to get it to work and to make sure that everything's in the right place. Now, it, I'm not a very good maker of things when things aren't in kits, if they aren't all the parts aren't made for me. Uh, it's very difficult to measure up and get all these bits and pieces. But I'm hoping there's, there's three uh, engines in this line that he's done of these engines made from uh, bits and pieces that you'll find around the house. And I'm going to try and make the others because he sent me the plans for all three and he doesn't charge you anything for the plans, the plans are free. And uh, they're very detailed, I've, uh, I don't know whether I've got the plans here now. I can't, oh, the plans are down here. <laughs> I will show you the plans just to give you some idea uh, of what uh, my foot boy will send you. These are the plans and uh, I just move the engine over there for a second. Uh, these are the plans he sends you. There's a, a little uh, a little view of my foot boy's uh, 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 blog there. You send you send to that, and he, he'll send you the plans. And he actually sent me the plans for three different engines. And I'm going to try and make all three of these engines, and uh, see if I can if I can't make them all. But I started with the the Pringle can one, and. Uh, the first one didn't work very well because I I'd got a, one or two things that I didn't make right and therefore I had to remake it. But this one 
I did manage to do. Now then this one works with uh, a candle. Now the candle is burnt down a little bit so I'm standing it on top of this little box just to make it a little bit higher. But you don't have to use that box when, you, when you've got a new candle. It, it's perfectly alright to work without the uh, without the, the little stand that I've got the candle on. But it works on a tea light. I just let that burn up a little bit. You place it underneath the Pringle tins like that and uh, just let it warm up a little bit and then uh, you just give this wheel a little turn and if all things are equal it's just got to warm up a little bit. It takes a little while for it to warm up. You've got to give a chance for that candle to warm up the base of this uh, little sterling engine that I've made following the prans but after a while if you're lucky and the heat builds up and there we go it's warming up enough now and that's <laughs> I'm amazed at that just little bits and pieces that you'll find around the house as you make the uh, the gears there out of uh, out of um, paper clips, and you've got a needle, and inside there there's a displacer. It's a little bit tricky, but as you can see, my wheels. I'm terribly good. I mean, I haven't made mine as good as the Myford boy made his, but uh, even so, there's a little bit of inaccuracy, especially on this side. When I turn it round, you'll see that the needle isn't exactly in line with the uh, pulley, but because it's on a bit of cotton, and the only thing that pulls that piston in the middle, the displacer as they call it, the only thing that pulls that down is its weight. It's made out of another little uh, part of the can. And it's just the sheer weight of that uh, displacer piston pulls it down. And again, I'm intrigued on how it works. I mean, the, the actual way that this engine works is quite clever. All it is is air being pushed from one part of the cylinder to another and then cools. And it, the, the difference in pressure, the difference in uh, the hot air at the bottom and the cold air at the top is enough to keep this wheel turning. Now I'm quite impressed with that, and I, I could sit and uh, watch it for quite some time. It's quite mesmerising really. There's the, the little balloon is going up and down, puffing away. That's like a little separate uh, cylinder. So this engine has works on a sort of a two-cylinder uh, way of working. It's got one which is the displacer cylinder, and I think they call the other one the power cylinder. And you have to have the two gears at uh, 90 degrees difference between uh, the way they are and you have to keep the have to keep the hot air going up because if I blow that candle out within a few turns it'll stop so it needs that hot air to keep moving and it's uh, it's fascinating really I, I really intrigued by uh, the way this little engine works and so I, I say I, I, I'm not terribly good at making things that haven't got uh, you know that aren't already made for you and just put on them together uh, my engineering skills although I understand engineering I haven't got the tools to make uh, things like this little engine which I showed you before this other one this one that uh, I bought I couldn't make anything as uh, as intricate as that um, but uh, they're wonderful little engines and I'm quite pleased with the way they work so, if I bring my other engine back in and put him in the background, there we got the three little engines, the flame liquor, which I like very much, and the uh, the little Myford Boy steam engine, uh, Sterling engine, I mean, and in the background here we've got the uh, mechanical. Uh, other engine which is a steam engine normally 
but they call it a beam engine because of this beam going across the top but it works on steam in the same sort of principle where hot air normally would have coal making fire and steam pumping into this cylinder at the front here and we're using these valves to push uh, hot air into that cylinder and the contraction of the hot air would pull the gantry up and down and make this engine turn the wheel and power whatever it was you're going to use for power. These were used in a lot of uh, mines back in the day when they needed to pump water out of mines all over the place and uh, the Cornish beam engines were, were very popular in their time for pumping water out of mines and uh, I think they make uh, these uh, use of these kind of engines which I, it might be called a Stirling engine I'm not quite sure but certainly it's a hot air engine uh, flame liquor uh, is uh, really intriguing but as you can see this little uh, this little engine here that I made is uh, chugging away all the while even though it's not made that that well oh it's stopped now but the candles getting a bit low so maybe there's not sufficient heat to keep this little engine going and uh, of course they, they they won't run indefinitely I mean what will happen eventually the air in the top of the engine will get as hot as the air in the bottom of the engine there won't be the difference in pressure and therefore the engine will probably stop even if you've got the candle underneath but for a while while that engine is uh, receiving the heat from the candle it will actually uh, keep running and it's quite intriguing to see it pop pop popping over the top and I, I like it but anyway that's uh, Grandad's little uh, I'll blow it out now and as you see as the candle dies so does the engine so that's my little uh, demonstration for today of three little engines which I like very much indeed and uh, as usual this is Grandad saying I'll see you again and uh, goodbye now bye bye